Epiphone is getting better than Gibson? I think that's a really loaded question these days. There's lots of different Epiphones, lots of different Gibsons that you could discuss in a video like this. We'll talk about specifically, I thought I'd pull out my Epiphone Les Paul Studio and my Gibson Les Paul Faded. They're both super guitars, quite different, different construction, made in different places and maybe it may be a perceived different value. So I thought we'd talk about the heritage of the brand, the country manufacturer, the finish, the construction methods, the looks, the headstock, the humbuckers, the electronics, all of that stuff, the neck profile, even the weight. And we'll compare them in great detail to really give you a sense of which brand is really getting better. And what does better even mean? Better can mean all sorts of different things to different people. Better can mean better hardware. It can mean better playability. It can mean better value. It really depends on a lot of things. So we'll get straight into it. In terms of the heritage of the brand, clearly Gibson knocks it out of the park. They are the forefathers of this type of guitar. Les Paul, he is the man himself. You can't beat that. Having said that, Epiphone also has a massive heritage and was bought by Gibson in 1957 and then gradually became what it is today, the budget brand, which does a lot of kind of mock Gibsons, like a mocktail. That's kind of what it's evolved into. Having said that, things are gradually evolving, and we'll talk more about that. The prices of Epiphones are increasing and increasing and increasing as time goes on, and they are getting higher spec, and they're starting to push out Gibson in some of that $1,000, $1,000, 1500 mark, which is quite an interesting phenomenon to see happen. So now let's talk about country manufacture. Clearly we're talking about US made. Gibson, that comes with a lot of cachet. Epiphones have been made in many different parts of the world. They started off being made in the US alongside the Gibson brand and they gradually moved across to Japan and then Korea and now we see them in China. They also went through a period where they were being produced in Indonesia a bit here and there too, but now we see them more Chinese made, which to some people carries a stigma to it. I think that's maybe a bit of a backward view these days. So many guitars are made in China and the Epiphone guys really know what they're doing. The guitar quality coming out of China is really superb and they use many of the same types of machines that they do in the Gibson factory. In terms of finish, they are really, really superb looking guitars. In terms of that overall finish, they look brilliant. So the finish on these guitars is also different. It's worth mentioning that the Gibson is a nitro finish and the Epiphone is a polyester finish. So what that does mean is that the nitro is going to wear over time more naturally and have a more weathered look the more you play it. The Epiphone actually has possibly a more hard wearing finish, but what does happen if it gets a knock or a ding or what have you, it's more likely to just crack that finish. It's not gonna look very pretty and it won't wear very nicely. That is quite different to what you're getting with the Gibson. Having said that, this one is a good example. It has accumulated little dings and nicks and stuff like that, as I've just as I've naturally played the Gibson but that's what you expect, that's kind of what you want. Does it mean that you're more likely to pick up the Epiphone? Because it's actually not gonna necessarily accumulate marks in the same way that the Gibson does. They're slightly different. Having said that, a construction method does differ a bit. On the Epiphone, you do have more pieces of wood involved. A quick note from Future Self here. I wanted to show you the extra pieces of wood that could be used on an Epiphone. So, for example, on my Slash Les Paul, you can see at the neck joint there, They've got the heel just there, which is an extra piece. And you have maybe, potentially, you could argue, lesser quality woods involved. So for example, on this Epiphone, and most of the ones that I have, you have a mahogany body, mahogany neck, and then over that you have a maple cap, but then you have a maple veneer to make it look pretty. So a very thin piece of maple. On the Gibson, you have something quite different. You have the mahogany body, but then on the Gibson, you have a full thickness maple top, which is arguably more expensive, but arguably adds to the tone of the guitar. It sounds better, supposedly. The headstock makes a big difference as well. Gibson, you have that beautiful logo on there, and you have the open book headstock. The Epiphone more recently has got that Kalamazoo headstock, which harkens back to how they were originally made back in the 20s. Now, that looks absolutely gorgeous on both. They both look really, really classy these days. There's not much to separate them, but you could argue if you are a brand person, 
Gibson is the one that you're going to gravitate towards. But let's not forget, Epiphone do also have the open book headstock, most recently on the 1959 Les Paul Standard. So the lines are blurring all the time. In terms of the humbuckers, the Gibson has the 490R and 490T in this one. Obviously, there's lots of different Gibson humbuckers. Epiphone tend to stick to, in the middle range, their Epiphone Pro Buckers. Those have come under some degree of flack over the years, depending, can be categorized as being a bit warm. But I think if you get your EQ sorted, the Epiphone can sound absolutely brilliant and it has tone for days and lovely sustain as well. In terms of the electronics inside, the Epiphone these days has CTS pots and you can even split both humbuckers. The Gibson clearly does also have CTS pots, which you would expect, and all Gibson hardware. The neck profiles, well, those can differ on guitar to guitar, so I don't want to focus too much on that here because the Gibson has a very nice slim profile and so does the Studio. They're both very, very comfy. In terms of weight as well, both of these guitars, funnily enough, are actually pretty lightweight. This Gibson is very, very light indeed. Gibsons have a reputation for being absolute bricks in terms of weight, four kilograms and above. So we're talking sort of nine pounds and above really really heavy having said that these are weight relieved both of these guitars are weight relieved with their so-called ultra modern weight relief which actually means the gibson's only 3.3 kilograms and the epiphone is about 3.4 so they're really really light guitars that's absolutely brilliant now in terms of quality assurance and consistency I would say that Gibson definitely wins in this one because there's no caveats there. What you see is what you get and what they promise on the website is what you will get delivered. Having said that with the Epiphone, they do have that caveat on their website, which does say they do reserve the right to change elements of the guitar depending on availability and quality. That certainly has happened on this Epiphone where it has Wilkinson tuners rather than Grovers. It's not a big deal. The Wilkinsons are excellent but it's something to be aware of, that different parts of the guitar could be different to what you might expect and what's specced up on the website. Now, clearly, price. That's the big one here. Now, to take these two guitars as the example, the Epiphone is around about 400 to 500. The Gibson, which you're more likely to find secondhand now, this one, is still gonna cost around about anywhere between 800 to 1,000. I'm talking dollars or pounds or euros here. The currencies don't make a lot of difference to the price overall right now. They're broadly the same in each currency. The Gibson, despite being one of their cheapest, is still a pretty expensive guitar, whereas the Epiphone is really not too bad in terms of expense. And here's a sound demo so you can hear the differences very clearly for yourself. So I'll start off with the bridge and I'll move my way through to both and then the neck and then I'll move on to the Gibson and we can kind of compare and contrast the two. So I really rate the sound of this. And it's because it's got split coils. Let's do that as well quickly. So this is all split coils. sounds like a really that's a really nice split coil sound let's move on to the Gibson so we'll do first of all the bridge on the Gibson and we'll move through the same positions as we did on the Epiphone <laughs> love to hear what you think in the comments. The Gibson sounds a lot brighter. And bear in mind, this doesn't have any split coils. This is purely the humbuckers, but it sounds really bright. There's a lot more spank to it. That's probably due to these humbuckers. They are known to be a lot brighter than the much more mellow Epiphone. 
It just depends what suits you really. Certainly a lot more bite to these pickups. A lot more bite in general to the guitar and the way it sounds. spank in this guitar is unreal it's really really bright really really crunchy let's quickly go back to the epiphone and then we'll do overall thoughts <laughs> I think the Epiphone represents excellent value for money. It's got some really premium features like the CTS pots in there. The Epiphone Pro Buckers, if they're dialed in correctly, sound absolutely awesome. And it's a fairly lightweight guitar and it's made very well. It's made to a high standard. Epiphone are getting better and better with their quality control. This is a fantastic guitar. So better, I think, is rather subjective. And I think these are both great guitars if you're in the market for a Les Paul, whether you're a beginner, intermediate, or an advanced player, depending on your budget. I think they're really good guitars to go for, and you're not going to miss out much by getting the Epiphone at all. It is an excellent guitar by any standard. So better, I think it's very subjective. There's various metrics you could do it on, but for my money, the Epiphone is probably the one that I would gravitate towards. It's got some really great specs in there. The Gibson I really love, but it is that much more expensive. Overall, I think they're both excellent. Please do like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.